Welcome to this episode of the Blog Chronicles. I am your host, Matthew Loomis. This show is sponsored by buildyourownblog.net, the full service destination for people who want to start their own WordPress blog and achieve long term success. Visit buildyourownblog.net to start your new blog today. My guest today is a blogger who works as a middle school teacher by day. She's a devoted teacher, does great things with kids, and she also has been blogging in her spare time for a few years now. And she has steadily built a following, an audience, and is making a name for herself in her domain. And she is setting herself up for a life after teaching. I don't know her age, but it sounds to me like retirement may not be too far off. And she has big plans for her blogging career, and you can tell she's excited about the prospect of doing it full-time one day. Her story provides a great example of someone who has a job, yet still found the time to reach for her dreams and begin building for her future with her blog. If you are still thinking about starting a blog, or you haven't been blogging much because you have a day job or some sort of separate career, be sure to check this out because my guest today took her side hustle and ran with it, and now she is already reaping the rewards, even though she is still technically blogging part-time. So class is now in session. Let's get our blog chronicle on with Janice Wald. Hi, Janice. Welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, Janice. Uh, so you own a website called MostlyBlogging.com. Uh, when did you start this website? Well, um, I've been blogging since the end of 2014. I originally started on a blog called Reflections, it was not self-hosted. And then about nine months in, I realized this was something that was going to continue for me and I was taking very seriously. And so I realized I needed to be on a self-hosted website. And that's when I changed to mostlyblogging.com. All right. Yeah. So you also agree that you need your own real estate online to, uh, to be really successful. Definitely. So what is the purpose of mostlyblogging.com? Well, I want to empower readers, of course, and um, I really am, you know, delighted when everyone tells me they find my tips helpful. It's not just for bloggers. Um, I offer blogging tips. I offer writing tips. So if people are interested in improving their writing, they can get value from my site. I offer Hmm. productivity tips often. So if people are looking for ideas for time management, they can get value at my site. I write often about uh, search engine optimization. So if people are looking to be found in search engines, they can find value at my site. I often write about social media. So people who are simply interested in using social media for none other than, let's say, pleasure um, can find value at my site. Great. Sounds good. I will be linking to your website in the show notes. Thank you. Let me ask you this. So um, are you a full-time blogger right now? I'm actually not a full-time blogger. I actually am a teacher. I teach medieval history and I teach yearbook design. I love graphic design, obviously working with computers. So I am a middle school teacher, but it is my goal to be a full-time blogger one day when I retire from teaching. Mm -hmm. I started early and it sort of took off to my delight. That's great. I think your story can really inspire people because uh, there's a lot of uh, people that want to one day become full-time bloggers and they're currently in job situations. So can you tell us a little bit how you are managing a regular job, a full-time job, and a successful blog? Thank you um, for for asking. And many people do ask. It's a question I frequently get asked. How am I able to do both? And I've actually blogged about it several times <laughs> okay. because I get asked that question so frequently. Um, and I would advise anyone who needs to multitask, you know, clearly the way I do. Um, by day, I'm a teacher. And in all my free time, I blog. At the same time, I have time for my family and my friends. Um, I would advise that you make a schedule. And that's exactly what I've done I, in my mind, and, and in my blog posts, I've explained this, the week starts Friday, because Friday I blog for Saturday, Saturday I blog for Sunday, Sunday I blog for Monday, 
Monday I blog for Tuesday. Hmm. And then I get a break. And then Wednesday and Thursday, and Tuesday nights, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I respond to commenters. So people who have commented on my articles, they certainly deserve a comment back. It's very important if you're going to be a successful blogger. But I need to make time in my week, not just for blogging, but to respond to the people that have written me and have questions about the articles that I wrote. And so by breaking the week up into two parts, the part where I blog and the part where I kind of, you know, catch my breath from the articles and respond to the people that have been um, interested enough to comment on my, my articles, it's worked out pretty well. And because in my mind I get that lull um, Tuesday night, you know, midweek, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, my husband and I are able to catch up on our television shows that we've taped. And, um, and if I do have social plans on the weekend... I know that in advance so that on Thursday, instead of responding to the commenters, I blog for the weekend. If I know I'm not going to have time, let's say, on a Friday night, and then Tuesday night and Wednesday night, I make sure that I'm all caught up on my comments. So my advice is, in a nutshell, to stay regimented, and that's what's worked for me for several years. When you say regimented, you mean disciplined? Absolutely disciplined, yes. Um, and, and I think, you know, you, you, you need to look ahead. You, it's very important to have that editorial calendar okay. and look at it all the time. So like I said, if, you know, I can't in my mind say, all right, I'm going to blog for Saturday on Friday because what if I have social plans on Friday? Then yeah. I still need to make sure the blogging gets done. So um, I have shelf posts. I have posts that are all ready to go. I call them shelf posts. And uh, so my daughters are away at college, but, you know, there have been times where the unexpected happens. They'll come in um, unexpectedly or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't think sickness has ever stopped me <laughs> because if mm -hmm. I'm in bed, I have more time to blog, not less. But <laughs> um, that's my advice is to stay regimented and at the same time have posts ready to go. If my report, I'm a teacher, so if my report card grades are not ready when I expect they're going to be ready, I have mm. shelf posts ready to go. So I feel I, I am organized. I think organization is very important yeah. as well as being regimented. Right. Do you have several different shelf posts going on at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, sometimes, though, I find that I'm so excited about a shelf post that I say, okay, this isn't going to sit on the shelf any longer. I'm, I'm going to use this. But I always have at least one ready to go for the unexpected, and, and that's a bare minimum. I try to have more than that. So if the unexpected happens, I'm prepared. Sounds like it. <laughs> Thank you. I like the term shelf post. That's good. <laughs> so you also have a book available called An Insider's Guide to Building a Successful Blog. Yes. Uh, I'm curious, who is your book targeted at? Is it just new bloggers or is it for experienced bloggers as well? Uh, it's, for, it's for bloggers of all levels. And actually, uh, commenters have written me that, that, that the one reason they like my blog is it isn't just for newbies. It's for bloggers of all experience levels. My posts are for bloggers of all experience levels. I think if I were to write basic blogging tips all the time, uh, my blog might get stale pretty fast. So I try to write uh, tips for, for all levels. Okay. Now, in your book, you share 11 different ways to simplify your blogging. Can you share with us one or two of those that are critical for bloggers who really want to grow a lot in the next year? Oh, yes. I, I've actually already mentioned one in this interview. Um, definitely, you need an editorial calendar. You, you can't wing it. You know, no matter how much you think you can, you can't wing it. Um, I would definitely advise an editorial calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, tools, automation tools exist. And there's no reason not to use them if they're going to make our life simpler and they're free. I've actually blogged about that as well. 89, I, I wrote... A, an article offering 89 free blogging tools and many okay. of them are, are automated and um and expedite our tasks i'll link to that in the show notes sounds Thank like a good you. one I, I appreciate it 
Uh, Janice, you also share in the first section of your book three guaranteed ways to get more online attention. So which of those three is one that anybody could do today and see immediate results? Well, you have to network. And it isn't just networking on any blog. You, you should network on a like-minded blogger's site. And there are many ways to find like-minded bloggers. I mean, Google, of course, you know, any search engine, you could type in blog plus, the plus sign, mm -hmm. and your niche. And even top blogs and the plus sign in your niche. And that way, uh, people who are interested in your topic, that's how you meet them. They'll go to your, you know, you go to those sites, you make comments, they read your comments, and they learn about you. And in my article, I recommended uh, getting in early. You know, if you subscribe to the blog, you know when the blogger publishes. If you're the first commenter, everyone who comments on that article has to scroll past you. They're mm. all going to see what you've written, and they're going to learn about you. And if they don't go to your site, you go to their sites. You can always go back to the article and read all the comments that have come in after you. And if there's someone that you think would be um, an interesting reader for you, if there's someone whose blog you'd like to read, definitely go to their site and comment. And in this way, you're going to build a community. You're going to make a network of people that are interested in what you're interested in. Many people have followed me back to MostlyBlogging.com, and they've told me that. They've said, I read your comment on someone else's blog, and I found your comment interesting, and here I am. Uh, they mm -hmm. come to my site, they, they find my other articles interesting, and they subscribe. So that would be my first and foremost um, you know, tip to anyone looking to build a community is to comment. And I think people find they just don't have time, but that's how you build a blogging community. That is how you get a readership. Janice, what's your process for blog commenting? How often do you do it per week? Um, knowing how important it is, I do it every chance I get. Um, I, you know, I if I'm going to a site for information, I still try to make time to comment on the blog, especially as I've said, if, if I'm early. If I'm one of the earliest commenters and I know every person who goes there is going to scroll past me and, and see my comment and see my, you know, my name, um, I definitely will uh, comment. Um, I, you know, we should at this point mention comment love. I do, um, that's one of the very few tools I pay for. I have comment love on my site. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say, and I highly agree, that if you are commenting on a blog that has comment love on it, definitely make a comment. Because the, the beauty of comment love is your, your headlines will show up along with your comment. So, um, and often you're able to pick the headline that you want to show up. So let's say three headlines ago uh, got more page views than let's say two headlines ago. Then I click on that headline that I want everyone there to see and everyone who comes in after me sees not just my comment but my headline. Um, there are actually uh, blog rules full of comment love blogs. People actually publish a list of blogs that have comment love on it. It's so important. It's so valuable that you comment on a blog that has comment love. So that's one way to find lists of bloggers. And I'm happy to say I know because many people include mostly blogging.com because I do have comment love on my site. Good stuff. Okay, well, I'll link to comment love as well Thank in, you. in the show notes. Now, in section two of your book, Janice, called All About Getting and Maintaining Traffic, you write about four ways to make your blog post go viral. <laughs> Which of those four techniques to going viral do you recommend the most? Well, um, there are several, but I think first and foremost is you've got to have a clickable headline. Um, I, you know, people come to me, I do have a blog coaching service, and so people come to me and say, I don't understand why I'm not getting blog traffic. So I go and I check out their articles, and often it's just one noun, like beauty. And while beauty, I'm sure, is a very nice headline, um, if somebody's going to take their time to read an article, they, they need to be made a promise. They need to be told what in that headline, 
what they are going to get. And, and I'm going to use a metaphor here for opening that door. You know, mm-hmm. before you enter a building, the first thing you see is the door. Do you want to turn the doorknob? That is the importance of that headline. So there's several formulas um, for creating what I call, what is called a clickable headline. You need to write a headline that makes a promise. You, you should have a number in the headline. Um, prefer, prefer, research shows it should be an odd number. Research shows you're going to do best if it's a prime number. So how many tips are you going to guarantee your reader, and what are they going to get out of it? Uh, and, and, and make the promise come true in the article. Some people read my, my headlines and they say, oh, no, 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 no way is this article going to come through on that promise. Hmm. And then they read my article and they find, yes, my articles do live up to the headline because credibility is everything in blogging. I would never write a, you know, clickbait, I think it's called, headline, hmm. and then not live up to the promise in my content. I always do. So that's what, what you need to do. And it's really pretty, a, a pretty simple formula. You know, you start with a number of tips, and then you end the headline by making the reader a promise. By the time you are done with my article, you will know this. And and, uh, and that's right there is the best tip I can get for having your blog post go viral. And, and I find it's true. Um, the last post I had that, that went viral had a, had a prime number in the headline um, and, and certainly made a promise. So... Uh, it's exciting to see on one hand, but on the other hand, there you know some people say there's no way to predict an article that will go viral, but there are factors that make it probable that mm-hmm. it will go viral. And the headline is a big factor, right? You, yeah, no one's going to read your content mm-hmm. unless you have a clickable headline. You can yeah. have the greatest content in the whole wide world. No one will know unless you have a clickable headline. Absolutely. And speaking of writing great headlines, I'm a big fan of the CoSchedule uh, headline analyzer tool. Do you yes. use that? Oh, yes. A hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Um, I will spend 30 minutes, uh, you know, uh, at times. Um, I, I don't think I've ever spent longer than 30 minutes, but I will not click publish unless I get a good score, you know, a high score on the co-schedule headline analyzer. And the beauty of the headline analyzer is it tells you what you're lacking if you don't get a high score so that I know what it is my headlines need. And then I try again and I put in those elements. And sure enough, my my score is higher the next time. Yeah, I love how it helps you get in a a percentage of emotional words and power words and unique words. Those are, that's great. you're obviously a big fan of CoSchedule because in your book you list six ways CoSchedule can help you improve your blogging. Yeah. So what are a few other ways uh, besides that head- headline analyzer tool that CoSchedule can help bloggers? I would I would recommend people uh, subscribe. I do. I subscribe to CoSchedule. I read their articles. Their articles are amazing. I mean, they've really empowered me to empower my readers. They've definitely made me a, a better blogger. Mm-hmm. And what's fantastic is when, I, when I'm done and, you know, I cite, I, of course, cite my, my references. I, I always research and cite my references in my articles. And then when, after I've published, I'll go to, let's say, Twitter. Mm-hmm. And when I go to Twitter, I, um, I, you know, it like CC the author of the article that I've gotten my research from. And there's a way to do that on Twitter with the at sign. And they actually will retweet, the, the authors there over at CoSchedule will actually retweet my articles for me. So not only are they um, wonderful writers, I mean, they, they, have, they have brilliant articles that I know empower me as a blogger, um, but they are very supportive of the blogging community because, like I said, hmm. they have, you know, they've shared my articles with me with their readers. Um, I know one year they uh, they wanted to survey their readers. I completed the survey. They sent me a wonderful, ch- actually, they sent me about twelve che- cheat sheets just hmm. to say thank you. So um, I know s- these are some of the uh, you know ways I've used CoSchedule to my advantage, in addition to the headline analyzer. Wow. Okay. I need to get in, you know, spend more time on their blog and get on their mailing list. <laughs> Janice, what are, uh, let's, let's shift over to, um, your archived posts 
And I want to ask you for a couple of tricks that you use to get more eyeballs on your old posts or your, your archive posts, uh, because in your book you share 12, and we only have time for a couple. So what are a couple of your tips for keeping the traffic flowing to older archived posts? Okay, I have two tricks, and these are great. Mm -hmm. First of all, you need to backlink to your relevant articles because, um, you know, especially after time passes, you might have more than one article on the same topic. So readers interested in this topic might want another article to read about it. So it's really, I mean, it's win-win. You know, you might get traffic to an older post, and they're going to get more information about a topic that they are interested in. Mm -hmm. And all, you know, you're, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of reasons that you want to do this. Um, people won't leave your site so, so quickly. Your bounce rate will improve. Over at Alexa, you'll see your bounce rate is improving because people are now reading a second post on your site and not leaving right away. But I read, and this has worked for me, that if you put the link, your backlink, at the beginning of your article instead of at the end or elsewhere in the article, you are far more likely to get traffic to that post. And I found that. I have a related post section at the end where I would give links to my older articles on the same topic. But I found when I backlinked early in the article, like through the anchor text, I, I received so much more traffic to my older posts. People, I, I don't know if it's because people are busy and they don't get to the end of the article where my related post section is. Whatever the mm -hmm. reason, if your readers want traffic to their older articles, they need to link back to them in the article, and I highly recommend early in the article. Fascinating. Okay. So put your backlinks up in the front of... Uh, like before they even scroll down, you should be able to see the links. Yes. Okay. Janice, I've got a, a philosophical question for you uh, to close this today that I ask all my guests. I'd like to know, how has blogging changed your life? Wow. I, I, I really did not expect to get the fulfillment that I've received over the last two years of blogging. I mean, as I indicated, so much so that now I, I'm considering, you know, when I retire, I'm definitely doing this um, full time. But um, what, there's so many aspects of blogging that, that are, are fulfilling. Um, I, I have people writing me from all over the world, all walks of life, thanking me, thanking me for my tips and telling me how my tips have helped them. And um, the empowerment uh, that people have told me I've given them um, is just is just phenomenal. I mean, you know, what better what better gift does any blogger get than that? Knowing that that you've helped people, um, the stories people have written me with, uh, telling me, you know, their their hardships and and their struggles and how in some way I have made this easier, um, is just it, there's no greater gift. There really is no greater gift uh, than that. And uh, you know, I'm writing more and more about how people can make money from blogging. But I know for a lot of people, that's thanks enough. And for me, uh, I just, I, 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 clearly you hear, I don't have the words. I mean, that, that to me is something I didn't expect um, hmm. to, to experience. Well, you sound like you're a very rewarded person. Uh, <laughs> you know, you get to... Thanks, thanks to my community. Thanks to my readership. Yeah. They've made me feel... Um, appreciated and and for that uh, you know it's it's mutual uh, and and of course i appreciate them in, in return yeah and you also get you know to help students during the day yes as well yes. I, yeah oh i'm sorry go ahead no i was gonna say i i'm a licensed english teacher i i have a, a credential in english as well as social studies so that desire to help people improve their writing there, there is a connection between what I do by day. You know, as I said, I'm the yearbook teacher at my school, so yeah. I help uh, students by day with their writing, even history. Of course, they write essays for me. Uh, so there is a, a, you know, there's a, a continuation of what I do by day and by night. Do you ever refer your students to your blog? Well, I have not. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if, you know, 
telling them that I do this thing off, you know, online is is relevant. Mm -hmm. However, uh, they have searched me up. Uh, they've typed in my name to Google, and they've seen <laughs> that I am a blogger. They've seen my articles. Okay. Uh, one young lady came up to me just this semester and told me she appreciated the articles, that she reads them. Some of the teachers at my school as well have told me that they found me online, and they um, I know one at least one subscribed to my blog. So even though I don't advertise it at school, um, it seems to <laughs> to be getting out. And and I know some of the teachers have told me that they too would like to start blogs, education blogs, and so forth, and have asked for my advice in yeah. this regard. Yeah, everybody gets Googled, right? At some point. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so Janice, uh, where can people get a copy of your book, An Insider's Guide to Blogging, a, or excuse me, Building a Successful Blog? Yes. Um, well, certainly it's available on Amazon.com. And if they go to MostlyBlogging.com, they will see a picture of my cover and a link to my book in my sidebar. Great. And if uh, someone wants to follow you on social media, where can they find you? I'm everywhere, Matt. I am. Hmm. I, I believe in the shotgun effect that you put yourself out there and, you know, see what comes back. Um, Clout Score says you should be everywhere, and I really am. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Twitter. As I've mentioned, I'm on Facebook. Um, I guess those those are the biggies. I always make sure I promote to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, I guess those are my top three. But as I said, I'm I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm my articles are on Reddit and and LinkedIn as well. Okay, great. Sounds good. You know, we've just met for the first time today. I'll have to look, look you up there on social media as well and start following. I'm active on Kinged. As I start writing more and more about marketing, Kinged is a marketing site, and I'm really enjoying that community. Kinged. I'm on Kinged uh, as well. You'll find me there. Okay. Sounds great. Well, Janice, thanks for coming on the Blog Chronicles today. It's been fun. I was excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me and having me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Blog Chronicles. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe on YouTube or iTunes and leave a rating or review to help other bloggers find us. If you want to chat, look me up on Twitter, at Matt Loomis. So who is going to be my next guest on The Blog Chronicles? He was a third-generation coal miner living and working in Virginia when a tragic accident down in the mines forced him into becoming a blogger. Not for fun but to pay the bills. After years of struggles and learning and making mistakes, he is now a successful online solopreneur. His story is quite amazing, and I'm calling this episode The Coal Miner's Blogger. So it should be a fantastic episode next time. So until then, keep blogging. Keep blogging.